All right, so Zwift Racing has kicked off massively in the last couple of days, in my opinion. Um, so we had the Cameron Jeffers versus VC Vegan Cyclist uh, race up the out of Zwift. And we also have the first 2019 e-racing criterium championships. I believe this is the first one um, ever, but I believe there could also be some races in the Netherlands that might have been official. But for 2019, this is the official, the first official e-racing criterium championship, which means that if you compete in this race and win, you get a proper Cycling Australia like medal and I think jersey with the bands. So it's official. It basically is like they're saying that you know there's road racing, there's crit racing, there's TT racing, and there's e-racing now. So it's just another discipline. British cycling also have the same similar thing. Um, and it, for me, it just means that like Zwift is actually now taken seriously. It's seen as a proper discipline of cycling. Uh, and obviously that throws up a lot of questions due to the potential to e-dope, um, either by changing your weight or by having a dodgy power meter which reads over, um, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of potential issues. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this one was run. I think people had to be, I know some people were there live in the Ballarat, but like where the nationals took place, but I think also you could compete from anywhere in Australia as long as you had a legit Cycling Australia um, membership, which is pretty interesting because obviously that means that it'd be quite easy to cheat. Have people cheated? I'm not exactly sure, um, but anyway. We will um we will see I guess in the future if they can tell if you're cheating or whatever. Um, I guess it'll be pretty obvious because you roughly know what what peculiar people can do. Um, but I guess the thing is it'd be hard to tell in real life. Um, but yeah, uh, there were also a couple other things you had to sign up to Swift Power and all these weird things. If you don't race, like I still literally have barely raced on Swift, so I don't really know what all this stuff is. But apparently you had to sign up with lots of different things. Um, but yeah, it raises a lot of questions. Like, is this actually part of cycling? Is it a different thing? For me, I think it's best not to compare the cycling. Um, in real life to e-racing just because the tactics and how you race is very different so I think yeah it's, it's better just to think of them as almost two different sports as in you wouldn't compare the necessary the tactics of cyclocross to mountain biking or something like that um, but yeah I think it's it's definitely an exciting thing it's definitely unleashes more potential to race thousands of people I mean there's no way you could have 950 people on the start line of a proper race um, like you did on um, Tuesday I think it was um, where you know Cameron raced the vegan cyclist and everyone else joined in and it's pretty sick like you know it's hard to do that in real life just because of the physical constraints and the potential for danger and there's so many different varying abilities while in Zwift it's safe obviously you can't crash um however obviously the racing is slightly more one-dimensional because there's no um skill in terms of moving up um bunch of position is sort of irrelevant because you can just ride harder to get to the front and obviously cornering is um irrelevant as well so it, it changes it a lot more I guess tactically because you have to be you have to save power, but in a more interesting way of, I guess, drafting and figuring out which moves to follow. Um, and also, I think if you have a dumb trainer, it can be quite hard, like, to figure out what the drafting effect is. Because for myself, like, I don't have a smart trainer, so you don't really get, like, the easy effect when you're in the wheel. So I don't really know what that necessarily feels like. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely is the future in some respect, as in it will get bigger because people will be able to race their friends online. And that's quite cool. Um, and it's also good, like, let's say you live in the middle of nowhere, let's say you live in, like, for instance, Thailand, like, in the summer, like, when it's rainy season, they can't race. But let's say you want to be fit, then you could do the Zwift racing, because it's all year round, it's, like, any time zone you can race, so it's super convenient for people who don't have many races locally. Luckily, like, in the UK, we have a lot of races, especially, like, near London and Bristol, there, there are a fair few races, so I don't really have that problem as much. But I can imagine if you did live somewhere where you know, maybe only five or six races a year, but you want to, you know, hone your race fitness before the first race of the season or something, then yeah, it'd be, it'd be absolutely great use. Um, but yeah, so I think it's it's quite interesting. I think in terms of the commentary, like, I don't really enjoy the commentary. I don't really like the people who commentate, but that's just, I guess, personal preference. But yeah, I think in terms of making it more professional, they definitely need to learn more about, like, the camera angles, how to easily identify people, because it can be quite hard for people to, like, know who's who, um, especially if you don't really follow the racing, like, there's no clear kits, really, because there aren't that many teams. There's no clear, like, there's sometimes there are, like, little things above people's names, but some uh, above people's riders, like, the little names, and sometimes there isn't. And I don't really get that either. Like, why would you just not have the names all the time or some of the time? Or, like, it, it makes no sense to me. And also, the, because there's no numbers and there's no there's no recognising on pedal styles, it's incredibly hard to pick out someone from the bunch and be like, oh, yeah, that's him, because they, everyone looks the same. Or that's her, because they all look the same. Um, so, yeah. I think there's a couple of things that need to, I guess, be worked out with that um, and to figure out. And I also think, like, time gaps need to happen. Like, they have distance at the moment, but there's just, like, so much information. But in reality, it's like you just want the time gaps from you, maybe the, the group ahead of you and the group behind you. I think Zwift needs to work more on that. Um, 
I think in my opinion Zwift has sort of messed up the racing quite badly. They haven't really improved it that much for quite a long time and they really could have made it next level by having like proper time gaps and like proper, you know, figuring out like what is a bunch, what is different riders, but instead it just seems like they haven't really done anything and they just sort of inc imp improved slightly because they used to not even have racing like as a segment, like you just met up or like then they started having racing group rides and then they started having positioning and things because before it's like you could see everyone but now you can only see people in the race, which is better. Um, but yeah, there's definitely still a lot more they can improve on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm definitely going to get in more involved in the Zwift racing just because it'll be quite good to get more exposure for like the channel and everything uh, and myself because like if you do well, people obviously will then be like, oh, he's a YouTube channel, that's pretty cool and check him out. Um, but for me, like I generally don't run the turbo training because I absolutely hate it. Um, but it'll, maybe it'll be good mentally to do it and also it'd be quite good fun to like race some of my friends who I won't necessarily be able to ever race in real life because they, they either don't race or they live miles away so I could never actually physically race them. Um, but anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Will it be the next thing? Like there's also a professional league which is starting up now and will pro riders like, will it be their full-time job? In my opinion, it won't be their full-time job but potentially like if there's a big Zwift race, like that will gain more exposure, maybe you know a couple hundred thousand views across YouTube for a race that's bigger than most domestic races in the UK. Like you're not going to get hundred thousand people watching the recap of Chorley Grand Prix, unfortunately. Um, but maybe with Zwift, you, you could get hundred thousand views from different YouTube channels, and when it gets bigger, and that would be huge exposure for the brands um, who sponsor some of the continental teams. So potentially for continental teams, it will be quite a useful thing to do. But I don't think you'll ever get someone who just specialises in. Swift racing because it's not it seems a bit too much of a niche and I don't think really there's enough money in it um, But many maybe, maybe, maybe there will be I don't know. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts? Have you ever done a Zwift race? Um, do you think it's going to take off? Um, and like what will be the future of Zwift racing? Will it be seen as equal to road racing or will it just be seen as another discipline that people specialize in? Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video uh, and I'll see you in the next one